What's on, where, and when? It's the Talk of Nelson. Talk Nelson Radio. Welcome to Football Focus, where we cover all things football in the top of the south. I'm Chris Butler, and uh, welcome back to my co-host, Paul Bryden. Welcome back, Bryden. Nice to see you here. Morning, butts. Or was it afternoon? <laughs> very close. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Just whenever they get to watch it. No, welcome here. Okay. Uh, and our very special guest is uh, Val Smith. Welcome, Val. Yeah, thanks, Chris. <laughs> and thank you for, uh, for inviting me on. Yeah, great to have you here. You're the Operations and Administration Manager for Nelson Bay's Football and also, have to say, multi-world and Commonwealth Games medalist in bowls. Uh, I, l- I looked up your credentials on Wikipedia and um, the list was too long. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't name all the medals that you won because it would be that'd be a whole podcast. Well, right. Oh, she's been playing for a long time, but <laughs> oh, is that what it yeah. is? <laughs> we so we we might have achieved the same results if yeah, we were. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I think it's got something to do with talent, um, actually. So, but it is surprising how quickly time does go because, um, yeah, you, you don't realise until you actually sit back and think about it, and you go, "Oh my god, I, you know, I'm playing, been playing lawn bowls for." 30 something years now. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you're lucky. It's, it's, a, it's the sort of game you can play for a long time, though, isn't it? Well, it is. It's a game you can play for life. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Oh, well, there not, we go. Not well, like football. We'll yeah. have to. Even though I try. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. well, 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 maybe we need to change your career. We'll have to get some coaching tips off you, Val. Uh, on this week's show, we're going to talk senior men's and women's local premiership football, Southern League men's and women's, uh, some overseas news, New Zealand football news. And of course, we catch up with Val, not so much about bowls, but uh, believe it or not, had a football career as well. So we're going to be uh, talking about those days. Um, but first, Nelson Pine Senior Women's Premiership and um, results from last week. I whipped through them. Get Cars, FC Nelson Diamonds. They had the loss at the Botanics. Didn't go your way, Bridie. Um, The Foxes did it. Hot House crowd of Richmond, 4-3. Nelson FC Women's Reserves, 8-0 over the Mapua Cougars. Golden Bay Shield Maidens, 3-1 over Spriggan Tohuna Breakers. And FC Wahini had the bye. Mutuika FC Angels lost 8-0 to Nelson Suburbs FC Swans. Mm. And uh, Nelson... Suburbs FC Women's now hit the top of the table on goal average above Get Cars FC Nelson Diamonds and Hot House Creative Richmond Foxes. So before we talk about the fixtures for this week, um, presumably you're involved in the draws and the numbers and getting the teams together. So how's the season been so far with the Women's League? Uh, Look, it's been a, a challenging season for the girls. Um, unfortunately, the numbers aren't quite it, they haven't quite worked out to to set up an ideal um, competition. Um, well, I think we're what we're at nine teams. Um, there is a gap between sort of your top division sides and your lower division sides, so that does create issues on its own. Um, it would be great to see something change in the women's football where we can encourage more people to come along. Um, I don't know what the answers are. Um, I'm hoping actually the women can help me, at, you know, as time goes on, yeah, um, with ideas on how we can improve the uh, the the league structure for women's football to encourage more players into the game and to get the level of football up because at the moment there's probably three teams that sit out on their own and as a kind of like a first division, you've got a bit of a gap. Um, down to the next level and then quite a gap to the to the level below that. So to try and find an even split in across nine teams is um I feel is too difficult to create a good competition. So unfortunately some of these um weaker sides have to play against the stronger sides, yeah, yeah. which can be a bit demoralizing, but deflating. Mm. But until we find a a way to um create a more even league i think it's really the best scenario yeah and it has, it, currently look, to be fair it has been a challenge with the men's game too with, yeah with wakefield and uh, motueka and golden bay at times having to come into that premiership division so hopefully it gets sorted out and of course the world cup this year so yeah that yeah. might encourage a few to take up the game mm-hmm. let's look at the draw we've got motueka afc angels versus fc nelson wahini what do you think there paul 
Um, the Wahine, that's the FC Reserves girls team. I think they'll win. They've actually played them a couple of times this year. They played them in the Cup, and they won there, and they also beat them at Botanics in the round one. So I'll be picking Wahine. That's Sasha's team, he coaches, them. and she's doing a good job with them because um, obviously they've got a first team as well. So they've got good numbers there, and she, she, she as uh, Val said, it's, it's been challenging because they've had to play against uh, teams which are obviously better, mm. fitter, yeah. but uh, they've stuck in there. She's kept the numbers there, and uh, they're doing all right. But I, I pick Wahini to win that. Good stuff. And here's a big game. Nelson Suburbs FC Women's Reserves take on Hot House Creative Richmond Foxes. So top of the table clash here. Yeah, that's um, – well, there was a top of the table clash last week with the yes. Diamonds against the Foxes. And I think FC were 3-2 up with about five minutes to go and ended up losing 4-3. So the, uh, the Richmond Foxes coached by John Slotmaker, good side. And um, they normally year after year after year winning it, always win it. But mm. this year that – Quite even suburbs and FC yeah. have sort of come in even more poor, a bit more competitive. So uh, the women's reserves suburbs team quite a good side. They've actually grabbed a lot of players this year. So yeah, that I, I would say Richmond should win that. But and we got Golden Bay Shield maidens at home again uh, versus uh, Nelson suburbs FC Swans and Tarkica. So again, <laughs> the home ground advantage. Yeah, well that's Sarah Delaney Swans time. He's got to drive over there. Um, Technically, the suburbs one team got, got probably got better players, but as you say, you get over to Golden Bay, different weather, long <laughs> trip, <laughs> drive sickness or something like that, car sickness. But you'd think the Swans would win that. Okay, Mapua Cougars have the bye. Get cars. FC Nelson Diamonds take on the Spriggan Fern Tahuna Breakers at the Botanics. Another home game for the Diamonds. Yes, well they they would uh, bounce back from last week. I'd say they win that quite comfortably. Yeah. Okay, Nelson. Pine Men's Premiership Division One. So, what are your thoughts on the the men's division um, and you know the men's uh, participation league at the moment? Uh, pretty strong, good numbers, or what's well, your observation there? Well, then I think the numbers are good, um, but again, it's that um, division between sort of the the top sides in the league, and the, you know, there's always seems to be an issue with in the first division, sort of like bottom of the first division, top of the second division. It's always a, a challenging um, situation to handle, uh, to manage. Um, you know, that's with the uh, promotion relegation uh, system in place. And often the the gap between first division, second division, you think is quite, it's quite a, a big gap, right? Yeah, think? well, I, I just think that the, it's, in, a, in the ideal world, promotion relegation would work, but at the end of the day, it's a lot of teams like Locos were having a bit of a moan this year because they got promoted and because they, they mean they to be doing it socially, aren't yeah. they? Well, they, yeah. they are social players, so they were asked yeah. to go into the first division and they didn't yeah. want to be in there. And um, unfortunately, it, it is what it is. Yes, yeah. what the the these guys have decided to do. So I I, I thought get on with it, but uh, look, it, yeah. Any the southern leagues like that, then this you know yeah. you've got Cashmere Tech, Christchurch United, you know, then you've got the FC Twenties Nomads. That some of them teams are getting beaten eight nine nil. Yeah, at, yeah, at that level. And so, I mean, you no matter how far up you look in the in the uh, at the level of competition, you're going to get it in the English Premier Division. Hmm. You know, it's it's there everywhere. It's just managing managing it the best way we possibly can. I mean, at the end of the day, it's no reflection on the team as people or human beings no. it's a it's a sport we play and that's just part and parcel of playing sport yes. in my view yeah and it's just trying yeah. to get the draw right and hopefully you're trying to avoid buyers aren't you that's the other thing too that yeah. sometimes is difficult to manage but well the only yeah. the, 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 the only problem i see was coming from from what i've heard is that like certain players didn't want to play that level so they didn't want to play the game yeah. that's what you know really you want people playing the game but in an environment where they feel happy with. And uh, unfortunately, it's been a... It's a, a difficult it's environment. It's not a bit pear-shaped this year, but something to work on for next season to yeah. make sure that it's balanced right and... Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, though, I feel, always feel that if you're trying to um, meet someone's request for, for their reasons, mm. um, to find the balance to enable that to work, mm. you could be throwing somebody else into that very same situation exactly. yeah so how we manage that and how we get the best mm. um out of what we have 
that is always the that's you can't please the come. people all the time just some of the people yeah. some of the time that's yeah. right but look yeah just looking at that first and like fc nelson she at the top of the table locos well we only beat them 2-1 last week yeah you yeah. know so but you know what it's like when you're at the top of the table the bottom everyone's out to do you or try and beat you and it just shows there there was you know okay we could have easily lost that game yeah 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 and that, that was first against eight so yeah. you know it's still competitive yeah Okay, so let's look at the results from last week. Um, FC Locomotive went down 4-1 to Rangers, um, and uh, Rangers are a strong side there. Garden Motel Motueka lost 4-0 to Sheehan Financial FC, a good win to Bridie's team. Fresh Choice Richmond, 4-1 over the Seals, went against the tipping there. Mm. So uh, obviously youth came and fitness came through uh, there. Ben Wright didn't play. Oh, <laughs> And that was the difference with it. Well, <laughs> he makes a huge difference. He does. He's a he big does. man. <laughs> okay, there you go. Fair enough. And FC Suburbs, FC SBL Reserves, three all with Tahuna. Mm. So uh, that's a very close game indeed. So if we look at the draw, Brody, uh, the Seals this week take on Rangers. Gee, that would be a pretty good match at uh, Saxton. Yeah, well, the Seals last week lost. I was talking to Weasley. They had the bare 11, so they turned up. They scored early, and then, um, but just legs and Richmond train twice a week. The Seals don't really train. So <laughs> I think, and they're a young team, so they got on top of the end. I, I, I think with, um, if you get Skippy and, and, and Ben and, and Wes and Tommy and some older lads playing for the Seals, they're hard to beat. Yeah. But unfortunately, you're a few of them away, so they struggled there. But, um, uh, the Rangers this week, yeah. Look. Wes, he goes, oh, no, we'll beat them. I said, I can't see it. Rangers, uh, yeah, it's basically the Marlborough rep team. You yeah. should win that quite comfortably. She and Financial FC Nelson taking on Nelson Suburbs, pretty much the reserve team uh, mm. at Guppy Park. So you got a home game and uh, uh, young side. Uh, he coaches the uh, FC team, so he can't pick this one. Um, so I'll make the call there. It's going to be um, a tough match because these guys, uh, probably youth is their, the only negativity there, bit of an experience, but man, good technical and uh, yeah. good players. So you're going to find it difficult. But I, I Well, think the trouble that, is when you play against the suburbs development, you don't know who you're going to play against. The, the, the team varies every yeah, week because they're yeah. a feeder team to the southern league side. So when uh, the southern team's away at Tech, so yeah, yes, semi years, yeah. Ross McFeefe, the older guys don't travel. So they, I imagine, would be playing this weekend. So, yeah, look, be a tough game. Okay. You know, we've had eight for mate. You know, are we going to win every game? I can't see it. But And we've lost Corey Vickers this week. But, uh, look, we're tracking okay. Boys are confident. We played well last week. So, yeah, won't well, be easy. Well, I'll pick you at home. There you go. Sprig and Fern Tahuna versus Fresh Choice Richmond. So Richmond will be pretty buoyed by that good win. Mm. Um, so and even Tahuna with that result uh, would be uh, pretty up. So yeah, that's going to be a tough match. Yeah, I'd say it will be. It'll be tied. I'd, it's got draw written all over that one. But another draw. I'd say yes. yeah. Well, Tahuna get the Tahuna are the draw masters. I think they've had three. <laughs> so. But they're, they're, they're a good side. Older lads stuck together. They were struggling for numbers at the start of the season. They were another team that sort of had a bit of a yeah. had a bit of a moan about didn't want to be in first division. But look, they're in there and they're doing well. And it's it's it's, it's making those adjustments. Get the boys along there. Get a coach in place. Make sure you're mm. structured. And they're actually doing quite well. And yeah. they've pulled some results together. They beat the seals and they had a good result against the development team last week. So I, yeah, I, I think they could top Richmond over. But I'll draw this week. Okay, and FC Nelson Locomotive taking on Garden Motel Motueka, who will probably be a bit disappointed about a home loss. Um, so fairly even game, that one. Well, it's at Neil Park, number two, so they don't get on the, the luxury of Guppy Park. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a pitch a bit smaller. Look, Motueka, they've had a good season. They've sort of got nothing to play for now. They're out of the Chapman Cup. and uh, Yeah, Loco's sticking together. Look, they train tonight. They, 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 they work, yeah, wow. they do. They train every Thursday. Um, look, the eight eight losses for eight games, so they want to turn that around. Yeah, I, I think Loco's got a chance here. Yeah. Okay, Southern League women, and um, good to see them in the Southern League. Would would have been quite the effort to to get that pool to, uh, team together, and certainly you know, finance the trips away. And but great to see it happen. Have had a chance to uh, see a couple of their games, or 
Well, they only just started, really, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, they've only just started. But I have been down to um, I watched them uh, in their first game, and then I watched them again last weekend in the Cape Shepherd Cup. Um, they're a young side, um, so they're still developing. But um, there's a lot of there's a lot in the game that I really enjoy. I mean. When when you will go down and watch a game and you and you think to yourself at the end of the game, yeah, I'll go back and watch them. Mm. I mean, I think that's always yeah, you know, it's a good indication that you and um you enjoyed the competition, you enjoy what you're watching, you enjoy what you're seeing. Mm. And um, I think they're only going to go up from where they are. I know they'd be disappointed with their result last weekend, but at the start of the game, I thought they played um very well. They showed a lot of um great signs in the in the early stages of the game. Once the goal started coming, then that kind of they just lost a little bit of structure and um and it fell away. But um as I say, I think they're only young and they've still got a long way to go and I, but I lot li- I'm liking what I'm seeing. Yeah, but, so that was the Chatham Cup game against Coastal, wasn't it? So yeah. it went down six 0 but uh you, Kate Shepherd Cup. Kate yeah, Shepherd Cup, Shepard. sorry I should say. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But um I think the the other game was a draw, I believe. I yeah, think, so uh, the results for the Southern League, we've got Nelson Suburbs FC 2, University of Canterbury 2. So that's a pretty good result. Uh, Coastal Spirit and Otago, no score there. So I don't know what happened there, whether the game actually went ahead or not. Right. And Dunedin City Royals uh, lost 2-0 to Kashmir Technical. So as far as a start to the league goes, uh, good start. Got a draw and sitting second on the table. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. even the even the draw game was a little unfortunate. I thought I thought they played very well in that game, and um, a couple of goals came from a you know a, like a an unfortunate deflection. Um, but um, you know, but the defender got themselves in the right place to to make the challenge. And sometimes you you know it's out you know out of your control once mm. you don't know where a deflection is going to go. Yeah. So, uh, but the the game itself was very good. They played well. I think the coaster result is. Um... I think that team's been together a while now. Look, this suburbs team, they're in this. It's a new league to them. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. it's a completely new game for a lot of these girls. Mm. And, you know, their coaching staff out there, I don't know, actually know the guys, Platty and I think Geezer or whatever. Neil, yeah, they're yeah. doing a good job. And I've watched a few of them and they play good football. They they use the width, knock it around. They're okay, they're, gonna, they're on a good pitch there at Saxton's. But I think, like, the coastal team is... I think one of the favoured sides, them and Tech, and I just think in the top, top part in the middle of the attacking third, Coastal were quite sharp because I think every time they went forward, they sort of looked like scoring. So, but look, they're away at Tech this week, I see. So, it won't be any easier. No, that's <laughs> right. So the fixtures for this weekend: Universities of Canterbury taking on Otago University, so University Derby there. Dunedin City Royals taking on Coastal Spirit. And uh, yeah, tough one for Nelson away. Cashmere Technical um, at Garrick Memorial Park. That's mm. twelve thirty on the Sunday. So if you happen to be going down to Christchurch, uh, you can go and support them. But a massive pitch too. That Garrick Park. Right. Well, it used to be when I was going down there. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so we wish the girls all the best of luck, and um, yeah. and it's all about experience and building, isn't it? The Southern Men League, we've actually uh, gone through uh, the tips last week, so we just want to talk a little bit more about the Chatham Cup game, and of course they have Kashmir this weekend, Nelson Suburbs, so um, I didn't get to see the game, unfortunately, but uh, mm. did you guys manage to catch it at all? Yeah, I went to it. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, I went to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so first you, Brody, what were your thoughts on the Chatham Cup game? Only 1-0 down, so... Well, I, I, look, Suburbs did well, to, 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 to be fair. I just thought as the game went on, you'd think there's a goal in this, and um, I thought Tech were probably the better side. What they do well they, is they keep their shape well. You know, they sort of play four, three, three, one, two touch. They just move it quicker. Um, I think Stubbs just lack that ability from midfield up to the into in, into the attacking area. I think they must Ross McPhee wasn't playing. I don't know why. Um, I certainly would he, they miss him because he just he's that link, the attacking midfielder with the striker. And uh and in the end, they just yeah, they just moved the ball around, and I think Tech scored about ten minutes to go, didn't they? It was late. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, late, it was late. So yeah. there was nothing in it, and uh, Stubbies they did well, but um, technical just looked a wee bit to me a wee bit more structured, a wee bit more sharper. And they're a good side. You have got to remember they're always they're one of the top ten teams in New Zealand. Mm. Crash me Tech, they're a great club. They you know they've been 
pushing well well above their weight for, for the last couple of years, even even against the Auckland sides and the Wellington sides. So so it was the well. But uh, unfortunately in the day, um one chance, took it, and that was it. Yeah. One nil. So what were your thoughts you having to catch the game? Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed the game. I thought the it game, game was a fast game. It was. Um at fast and competitive right the way through. Good probably a little flat patch in the probably early in the second half. Yeah. Uh, and probably it's probably Cash Tech probably actually um yeah. probably got the goal on the back of that. Um but I like the attitude of the the suburbs team uh, after going one day. They threw everything at it mm. um to, to get a goal back. Uh, I don't think they could have done much more. Yeah, right. you know. Yeah. Um they gave it everything. They kept the ball moving, are pushing up and yeah, I'd, and enjoyed the game. Well, this weekend, Nelson Suburbs has to do it again. They take on Kashmir Technical Away, so uh, they went for this. So. Do you think uh, you know that took it out of them, or do you think they know now how to beat Kashmir? <laughs> yeah, well, as you say, it, it depends who travels, isn't it, with their team? Like the older lads don't, some of them don't like to travel, and I think that the team's a bit stuck without them. So they, I think, as I said, they miss Ross McPhee. He's he's a tremendous player, and he gives them that link between midfield. And that attacking attacking uh, third, uh, wherever he goes, I don't know if Sammy will go. He marshals that defence. Yeah, they're going to struggle, so they'll have to take. And I know Lucas Hogs has got a groin injury, um, so they'll probably have to take some kids. So, no, it's, it's, she's a bit of a big ass, and of course, Tech a second on the table. They want to stay there. I don't think Suburbs can make that top two, but you never know. They'd have to win this weekend, but a big ask. But they'll certainly go down there with a p- positive intent anyway to, to try and a good shot to try and bowl them over because that's always one of the biggest games of the year. Is catch me take away, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, yep. What are your thoughts, Val? What and what you saw? Do you think they can do it? Well, I think what Bridie said. Uh, I mean, I think they have to play their best team. Yeah, they need to have their best players available if they want to um, give themselves the best crack to win the game. Mm. Yeah. Overseas news, and we've uh, had the UEFA Nations League and the final uh, Spain over Croatia on penalties. Uh, yeah. That snuck up on me, actually. I didn't even realise no. <laughs> it was it was happening, but uh, I went into it uh, over the weekend uh, managed oh. to, to get that result. So Spain, actually, I thought, um, I watched a few highlights against, uh, I think they might have been playing Italy, but anyway, they looked. Well, I think that's, really their, good. that's their first trophy in eleven years or something. They haven't won. They haven't had much to cry about the old Spaniards because yeah. they're you know they're a big team. But uh, Croatia punched well above their weight. I tell you, they what a what a side. You know yeah. they did well in the World Cup. Their coach is a marvelous tech. You know Modric, and they just yeah worn torn country Croatian. Yeah, but they certainly any sort of competition Euros World Cup they're there. Yeah, and, that's right. um I know Davor Tabic, we love me saying that, and he loves Croatia because he's Croatian, but uh, no, tremendous side. But I think it was penalties in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, it was um, yeah, It when... was 4-3 to yeah. Spain on penalties. Um, so obviously it could have gone either way. Mm. But yeah, good players. I used to play with uh, some Croatian players in Bunbury in WA. Yep. Was great. Man, great players. Yeah, tough as nails and uh, technically very good. Mm. So um yeah, good players. A Euro qualifiers on at the moment too. There's no rest for the players, is there at all? And um, yeah, I certainly haven't been able to catch uh, all the games. I mean, geez, Group J it goes to. Oh, <laughs> but you know, you've got Scotland doing pretty well. Scotland, the top of Group A. Uh, France, England doing pretty well. They, I've seen highlights of their game. They're actually looking pretty good. Turkey up there, Czechoslovakia, Austria, Hungary. Finland doing all right, Switzerland doing all right, and Portugal doing all right. Yeah, it's a big competition. Well, the Scots did really well. They beat Norway away. That's right. And who's not a bad side. That's Earl Harling's That's side. right. That's right. And Odegaard from Arsenal plays at Norway, so Scotland winning there. And I think they beat Georgia at the weekend, 2-0, pouring with rain. The pitch was a <laughs> but they won that. So, you know, Scotland are up there. And I, watched, I did watch England against, they, they beat someone 7-0. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just far too good. Yeah, yeah, just too much quality in the end. And uh, other bit of news is the Conca. How do you pronounce that? Conca K. Sorry, the- North Macedonia. I wanted North- to get it right. Oh, right. And they beat North, North Macedonia. Macedonia. Yeah, <laughs> who actually um, knocked Italy out of the World Cup. Right. Yeah. Right. 
Um, so fun. the Conca Cave, I think it's called, but it's the Nations League. It's the basically the Northern American uh, League. Or it, mm. It's, I guess, second, second tier nations, but USA beat Canada in the final 2 0. So that's a trophy for them. And uh, yeah, they'll be pretty happy about that. And both USA and Canada were in the World Cup, weren't they? So Canada. You know, they're, they're looking at it having a bit of a bright future too. Well, Canada's a very good side. They did well in the World Cup, of course, a coach by John Herdman. Yes. He was tied up with New Zealand football yes. here. Yeah. The but one they, that got away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the one they thought they'd get back. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. They actually they actually gave him the job to coach the whites and he didn't know nothing about it. He said, well, I was thinking about it. And so that, uh, that certainly turned off a few other guys who were applying for the job, particularly the, the lad at Phoenix. So, uh who fucked Tale? He's yeah, yeah. well, can't stick it basically. So, yeah. uh, but no, no, yeah, Herman's done well, and his boy's a good player as well. I think he's in the New Zealand the twenty threes or nineteens or something like that. Yeah. Uh, all whites news, and the all whites played uh, a couple of fixtures. Val, I don't know whether you saw the highlights or any of those games, but uh, it was Sweden uh, versus Sweden, and they went down four one, and then they played Qatar, and the match was abandoned. Because of a dispute between two players and both sides claiming racial slurs, so did you manage to catch any of those highlights? Well, look, you don't want to look. It's just a, it's a shame they couldn't play the game on, but um, obviously they dug a hole in the ground and said we're not going back out. FIFA's certainly not backing them up. I don't know what's going on now, and uh, it's uh, he said, she said something, mm. but uh, obviously you know that. Qatar's got the money. FIFA should be probing into that because they're trying to clean it up with racism mm. around the world. But, mm. you know, if you imagine that was England and Harry Kane got mm. racially abused, you wouldn't hear the end of it, would you? It'd be no. well, all over the news. The so. Kiwi players certainly got up in arms. So there was obviously something said, but now Qatar have come back and oh, said, yeah. no, no, it was. Of course they have. But the Kiwis are up 1 0, you know, yeah. half time. So, um, so that was a pretty good result. And, um, uh, the Oceania football under 19 women, they play today versus Fiji. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and they're taking on Papua New Guinea on the 25th. And it's 29 days to the Ford Football Fern. So, based on your comments, Val, uh, the good news for women's football because this might encourage a, a few to play. So, what are your thoughts about uh, the forthcoming World Cup for the Ferns? Oh, I think it's uh, very exciting for New Zealand, you know, this side of the world, to be hosting the the FIFA Women's World Cup. I don't think, you know, possibly in our country we're aware of the size of the mm. the game, the women's game, you know, worldwide. Mm. Huge. And I think this will be um, an awesome spectacle. Hopefully we can, um, well, football, New Zealand football can pick up a lot of girls and women on the back of the the World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. Really yeah. looking forward to that. So we'll talk more about that as it uh, comes closer to the big event. You're with Football Focus and our very special guest is Val Smith. She is the Nelson Bay's Football Operations and Administration Manager and multi-World and Commonwealth Games medalist in bowls. But uh, you're well known for your bowls achievements. Uh, but in actual fact, uh, you've had a pretty good football career as well. And uh, I just wanted to get a, a bit of background on how it all started for you. So when did you start playing and who did you start playing for? Um, well, I played my first like proper game of football. I only I only um, found out that women played football when I was in the third form at Nelson College of Girls. Mm. And, um, and that was only by chance of walking past the little Wembley Oh, right. One day, yes, yeah, right. and seeing them training down there, and I was so like I was shocked a bit. I was so, well, I was so excited about it. I actually went down and asked if I could join in. By that stage, it was the end of the season, so there were um, I didn't play that particular year, but um, I joined in one of their training sessions and decided that I would play um, the following year. So I was fourteen, I think, when I started playing. Um, football in Nelson so I played hockey prior to that um, so I was nine I started playing hockey at the age of nine and um, positionally it was is very the the two games yes. are very similar but I think it all started even before I found out that women played football and 
grew up in Friday's neighborhood. <laughs> it was football mad. Yeah. And um, every little park and, you know, Victory Square and any other little nearby park would always be kids playing football. Mm -hmm. You just join in. Because uh, your yeah. sister played as well. I yeah. Remember. So we'd both just join in with the boys yeah. um, and on the parks around uh, the Victory Square area, Victory School itself. Um and there were some good players back in the day that back in those times too. I mm -hmm. I was in the same year, you know, remember Leighton Edwards and yeah. Gary Ivany and those yeah. boys. Yeah. So uh the Defoos and the Pellows. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'd just be um my sister and I and I had another friend of mine. Um, we just join in with them and they they would let us, you know, play along with them. So So that friend being uh, well, Joe Edwards today, but Joe. No, that, no, no, it's actually before Joe. This was before yeah, Joe. Yeah, ah. yeah. Uh, so I met Joe later, more in um, in my later years at college. Ah. Yeah, but um, yeah. So that was when the actual first sort of unstructured football was that I played, and so when I saw that it, that woman actually did play football, I that was exciting, and um. So both my sister and I, we joined in that following year. And um, and I was very, very fortunate that as a youngster, I thought I was 14 when I got named in the Nelson Women's mm. representative team. I turned 15 the day we traveled to the national tournament. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was only a youngster. So uh, who was coaching that side? So that was Morris Woodhouse coaching oh, that right, side then, um, the, the Nelson women's representative side. They coached for one year and then um, Gary Walt, uh, Walt John Croon. Walt, Walt took the, the Nelson United girls team, didn't they? Yeah. And John Croon and Gary assisted John Croon for oh, a number right. of years yeah. there. Yeah. And then Gary took over um, after that. And then, yeah, I've been lucky. I had some really good coaches um, and now so like, Morris was he was hard coach, yeah. so it was my first real int introduction into that sort of, you know, old school tough um, coaching regime. But the I was I was very lucky because I had um, there were some very good female um, sports women, you know, there were Nelson oh, sports yeah. women at the time that you know Karen, Karen Rackley. Rackley, Jane Miles, Karen Karen Walton, yeah, um, who I you know i admired and looked up to and um so they kind of set the standard to what you were you know what you wanted to achieve yeah mm -hmm. so that was on the local club scene that was nelson college for girls they had a, a yep. side and so there was a league uh, uh so a few yeah, how many people in that league um or how many teams should i say back then there might have been six mm. uh all the schools were represented, at, uh, right. all of the secondary schools, and then suburbs, Nelson United, back, so it was Nelson United before FC Nelson. Um, trying to think, oh, Tahuna. Tahuna had a women's team as well back then, um, and possibly Richmond. Right. I'm not sure yeah. where they, Waimea College, possibly Richmond. Yeah, Richmond. So we talk about the women's yep. game today, but in actual fact. Oh, Mochuaka as well. Oh, they right, had a right. team, yeah. Right. Yep. So we talk about the women's game today and the growth, and but I mean, um, you know, uh, I, I remember you know some good players, you know, during that time, and the league, you know, was pretty strong, wasn't it? There's yeah. Some good athletes, and it was a good era. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed that. Uh, my years at football and Nelson, um, I, I felt I thought it was a really good era of women's sport. Um, as I say, there was like you know the the those older sort of inspirational um, women playing. Yeah. And um, it was a growth period because, uh, you know, I suppose women's football would have been relatively new at that stage. So, the, you know, from a skill basis, we probably weren't that great. But from um, raising your fitness levels and the sort of that hardness and, um, and well, just yeah. playing, playing from the heart. That mental that toughness. Us, yeah, that mental toughness. Yeah, yeah. it was um, because you had guys like Jane Miles who represented New Zealand softball. Yeah, uh, Karen Fraser, Karen Rackley, softball. They were all Karen, you know, they're all good sports. Yeah, they sports. were. And I think when you get yeah people like that, are good other sports, and you come together in a a team sport like football. Yeah, you, you tend to have that, that yeah, mental that, edge. 
that's right. That's mm. probably what women's football was back then. It was like um, most of the women had come from another sport, would play. So we used to play – our football was on a Sunday, mm. and the majority of the women that played football on Sunday would be tied up in a sport on Saturday as well. Yeah. So, um, and a different sport. So, so was all your footballing in Nelson at club wise? Was that in Nelson, or did you ever venture outside of the region to play for another club? Or no, that was I, always in. Yeah, it was yeah. always in Nelson. Yeah, yeah. and um, higher honours. So, my memory going way back is that there were some New Zealand representative uh, teams that you and Joe played for. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so I was, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be selected in New Zealand under twenty one. Actually, that was when you were coaching us, Paul. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You, I did you, touch you, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were my coach the year that okay. I got selected in the yeah. Under yeah. <laughs> yeah, the prodigy. Yeah, yeah. and um, I still remember you and taking me down to Victory Square with with John. Yeah. With your brother yeah. giving me additional training when I was, um, you know, getting prepared to go away with that under twenty one side. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and then the following year, I got named in the um, New Zealand B team uh, to play in an Oceania tournament in Christchurch. Uh, but I was in the New Zealand squad for six years. Actually, Joe Edwards was as well. We were both in the New Zealand squad for six years. We laugh about it because um, we f- we feel like we're the sort of the the longest reigning subs, you know, like <laughs> the, the longest be- reigning members of the squad to never actually play oh, yeah. for um, you know in the New Zealand first awesome. team. But it was yeah, it was a frustrating time. I've never regretted it because I loved. Um, I've always loved the thrill of the chase mm-hmm. so if there's always that element of hope there i you just keep going that you know that's my philosophy so when you like when we're doing all the training to try and get into the um new zealand squad you're not thinking about um the disappointment of not being selected you just you're training in the hope that you are going to be selected and um it, just the way it fell for us it was always you know if they were going to take a We'd be in the the squad if they were going to take 18, 16 players. We'd be the number seventeen, number eighteen. <laughs> and, and well, you we weren't far away. No, no, no. Was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you just need um, someone to have a couple well, injuries, and you're yeah. right. <laughs> it was always a tough gig for us because yeah. you're, you know, like played for a you know minor association, and if you were going to away, going away for an international training camp, uh, for a national training camp, and it was over five days. Um, and you're training all day for five days. You can't really afford to miss a session. You know, you have to you have to put yourself out there 100 percent for every to give yourself every opportunity. Where some of your top players could might go and have a vis- physio <laughs> appointment in the morning, yeah. miss out a few training sessions, come back fresh in the a- afternoon, and also presumably all at your own expense. So there was no oh, well, yeah. no academies no, or no sponsorship days. or no. Mm. Had to make your own way there. Yeah, mm. but it was a, I liked um, the back in the back then when we we had a national tournament to aim for because mm. at national tournament time was always a you know a, an exciting time for the um, you know the the Nelson women's representative side, and so you train hard you know just for this one event, and um, yeah, it was always an exciting time for the players, yeah. but you know that where they play week to week now. Yeah. And a different sort of, a whole different structure, really, you know. Yeah. But they were good uh, days. Uh, now operations and administration manager for Nelson-based football. So how did you get into the role? How how did that come about? Really, it was just the same. Applied for the job, didn't you? Yeah, just applied for the job. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it was, um, sometimes it's just, you know, right place, right time kind yeah. of thing. I just returned from Australia. I didn't have a, I came back. From my time over in Australia, with no um, sort of with the uncertainty of what my future was going to bring. So that was so during COVID time. That was during COVID mm. time. And, and you were doing bowls administration. I mean, obviously playing, but also bowls yeah. administration. Yeah. So I was working in bowls administration over in a club in Sydney, and during the COVID lockdown, it was um, then I decided I wish you know I wanted to return home, and I came. 
but I came home with no plans. And um, so I didn't have a job lined up or anything like that. And um, just through word of mouth, um, people, there was the mention of um, a sport, you know, a job going through mainland football. And um, and so I found the source, the application um, or the advertisement and just sent in my CV with a cover nice. letter and, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about what the role entails? Um, so the probably the majority of the work is around the competition structure. Uh, so it's creating the competitions for, you know, to enable people to play um, each week. And just keeping on top of like um, sort of ground requirements. Um, you're working, you're liaising with the with the referees. Um, it's there is uh, communications is a big part of the job, ensuring that information is being sent to um, to the clubs, and that aware, they're aware of anything else that's going on. It's just keeping keeping clubs informed, and um, it's basically the general running of. Mm. Um, a few challenges. Is a yeah. There's a number of challenges. Mm. So let's talk about those. What what are the challenges that well, you face? I don't want to go into too much detail regarding challenges from a from a negative aspect, but I think um, we've already touched on probably what I consider would be the the biggest challenge is the um. Is, so so my the two the two big things um that I've lived by in my own sporting life is fairness and spirit of the game. And they're they're the two sort of top of my list kind of um, values in sport. So I think for me, it's trying your very best to enable a balanced competition that's fair and um, enjoyable and competitive for all teams at all grades, like right from ninth grade up to your senior men's first division. So it's trying to maintain or find and maintain um, that balance. It's not easy. Right. And um, and at times it could even look messy or a bit ugly. But, um, but I think you just got to keep working at it and working at it and working at it. And hopefully, you know, as long as... Uh, I just think as long as you're trying your hardest to do that, your best to do that, and you've got to rely on the um, the feedback from the clubs as well and the, the clubs and the coaches um, to find that balance. But that's, um, yeah, I think that's the hardest thing. T- tell us a little bit about the support structure. So who are some of the key people involved and in, the key people that uh, are involved in the local region um, that are supporting you at Nelson Bay's football Okay, so the the way it's set up at the moment, I might, I might as well start from the, the top. So we're a branch of mainland football. So I'm employed by mainland football. So I have a um, an obligation to both mainland and Nelson Bay's football. Um, so so I'm directly responsible to the CEO of mainland football. So they're, they're there to support um, us here in Nelson. But in Nelson itself, we have a um, a working group and that is made up of the presidents of the the clubs and also with referee representatives and Stu Reid, who's the mm. the representative to the the Nelson Bay's representative to the mainland board. And um and so we come together on a sort of once a month or once every six weeks and we discuss um you know what we feel we need. You know what needs to happen in Nelson Bay's football. So, and we also got the support. There's we have um, Sheree Lapsley from Mainland, who's also a link between um, Nelson Bay's football and Mainland, who assists us as well. And then uh, throughout that, you've got representative coaches, and then you've got the, the well, junior the, the, game as well. Is yeah, that right? You got yeah. the directors of football. Right. Yeah, well, they're well. basically run by their own uh, clubs. Yeah, right. but yeah. most of it is yeah, it's all club driven. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so but if you uh, Nelson representative football, that still goes on. So a Nelson Bay side will go somewhere, no, or is it all club based? It's all club based. Right, club so based, it's completely yeah. changed to a club yeah. based system. They're yeah, trying right. to 
the, there has been attempts to bring back um, levels of uh, mm. representative football, haven't they, to sort of uh, to provide that competition for those talented players um, like they had the under-17, Tasman under-17 team yeah. last year. Yeah. They did try to get a Tasman under-15. Into the Canterbury League, didn't they? Yeah, into the Canterbury League. Difficult. Um, yeah, because you've got to, you know, there's a, there's a lot of sort of licensing around coaches and yeah, a lot but of criteria around the Things have changed, but the World yeah. Game's all about club football. Yeah. And that's just the way it's going at the moment sort mm. of thing. So those tournaments we used to have in the mm. 16s, national, they were great, but yeah, mm. they just seem to be a thing of the past. So what you got there, you got clubs of academies, FC's got academy, so he's got academy. They have academy teams that go to tournaments. And we also, yeah, we just they, they have these international tournaments down Christchurch. So yeah. there's plenty of opportunities for young players these days. It's just it's, it's yeah. not all club centric. Yeah, the, the tournaments are still there. So they've yeah. brought back like Jack McKnight, which is yeah. used to be a um representative event. Well, but that's a club like, tournament. Now it's a club tournament. Mm. Right. Yeah. No oh, good. So what do you enjoy about the job? Um well, believe it or not, for some of the grief that I <laughs> endure, I actually like the people. I mean, I love the sport, you see, and I love sport in general. Yeah. Um, so I enjoy the fact that you are um, part of something that's been um, an important part of your your own life. And, um, and I enjoy trying to... Um, Make it better. Yeah. <laughs> trying to find ways how we can make it better. It. I, I I enjoy that. I, I think I enjoy, you know enjoy the hope mm. that you can make a difference. Yeah, yeah. and I yeah. think the other thing too with your role is that to me it's all about participation. Just get people playing the game, and it's happening. Yeah, as I did, we talked about rugby, mm. the numbers, junior figure, you know, junior uh, figures are huge. You know, we've got a lot, of, a lot of kids are playing the game. And as you know, a bit of work to do with the women's game, but that'll come after hopefully this tournament. So mm. if we keep positive and, and keep driving the game and, you know, getting coaches involved, you know, the, the toughest thing in this is getting coaches to do the job. So, but yeah. yeah. And no, it's good. Volunteers, volunteers, helpers, like referees, yeah. you know, you know, all, all big challenges. Yeah. And, we, and, and we hope as time goes on, we'll get some of those key personnel yeah. in and, you know, talk about some of those areas, specifically refereeing, you know, and their challenges and those kind of things. Yep. So, um, and you're off to the bowls world. Yes. Where's that going? Where's, where are you going for that? So this world championship is the, um, it's on the Gold Coast, uh, late August. And it's the, this is the world champs that was, um, cancelled due to COVID. This was supposed to go ahead yep. in 2020. Um, so it's now been held this year at the, on the Gold Coast, which yeah, well, that's um, not too bad, is it? No, not too shabby. It's it's um good good for us because it doesn't make a huge impact on the way we train, as opposed to like when we were at Birmingham last year and you're mm. playing on Northern Hemisphere green, so it's completely different conditions. Um, but now this is more uh close to home yeah. and conditions that we're more more used to. And and what areas are you playing in? What teams are you part of? So I'll be skipping the triples. And playing three in the fours. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. good. Excellent. And you're still enjoying it, Fowl, obviously, because I think you mentioned you've been doing something like 30 years. Yeah. Of, uh... Well, I've been playing bowls now for like, I think, 32, 32 years. And I've uh, been in part of the New Zealand side yeah. for, um, been in the New Zealand first team for like 20 years. Um, but there's so much to enjoy outside of just the sport itself. Um, like I've always just enjoyed participation, competing, playing, challenging yourself, wanting to know, you know, like how good you can, mm. you know, become. But, um, but what I've also enjoyed in the time that I've been there, I've seen, I've seen it evolve. I've seen sport evolve. So I've seen the way coaching has evolved and how, and the responses from players to that, those changes as well. So I'm, it's very exciting to see um, people grow and develop um, through sport and just seeing the confidence raised and, you know, and people seeing even discovering um, your own growth and knowledge and um, 
just experience and and how you can see I see my my role has changed in the New Zealand team from you know when you first come and you just see yourself as a player now you're at a point where you can you can become a a, a mentor and a role model mm-hmm. and a support right. person to all those younger players who are coming into the sport so that's so it's kind of like a a bonus to just playing it's, yeah. yeah it's more than just playing the game Good stuff. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, thank you very much, Val. Mm -hmm. It's been an absolute pleasure having you in. Um, It's great to uh, remember those days, Victory Square, and, um, and, uh, you know, uh, great memories and and appreciate an insight into all the work that you're doing with Nelson Base Football and the challenges that you've got to face. And on top of that, away to the world. So you've got to keep your bowls up to standard as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're a legend of both games, actually, and it's a pleasure to have you in here, and, and we appreciate your time, and we hope to have a, maybe an, another chat uh, down the road to see uh, next year, perhaps uh, see how the, the you know growth in sport is going in, in the Nelson Tasman region. So good to have you in. Thanks, Chris. Good to have you once again, Brian. Oh, thanks, Chris. A world, a world of knowledge in the, in oh, the football well, game. I'll uh, do my best. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, We'll uh, be back again next week with another edition. What's on, where and when? It's the Talk of Nelson. Talk Nelson Radio.